Hello everybody and welcome to another review. Today we're going to be talking about a game that I have been very excited to play for a very long time. It is my most anticipated game in 2019. It is one of my more anticipated games of all time. It is one of my more hyped up games when it comes to Square Enix. And as it stands it also is one of my probably all-time favorite games I have ever played and we are going to be talking about Kingdom Hearts 3 yes that is right now before we get right into this review I do want to say that you might hear some you might hear or see spoilers related to the game because I'm going to be trying to talk about my fonts about it and that will include me talking about the story I won't be detailing the ending or the secret ending but I will be talking about the events that happen within the game itself and what I think about them. Now if you guys do not want to see that, I recommend you just click off this video and just go and play yourself. <laughs> yeah, but if you're gonna sit here and listen to me ramble for at least a couple of minutes, well then let's just get started. Alright, let's talk about the gameplay for a sec. And the gameplay in Kingdom Hearts 3 is probably one of the best of all time for the series. Not only did they retain this fast paced combat from Kingdom Hearts 2, they also retain the focus shot from Birth by Sleep and the fluid motion from Dream Drop Distance. Not only did they manage to build a system around these free elements, they were also able to improve upon the combat very much so. And they managed to add in a few different little tricks into it. Like for example, it changing the forms to that of the Keyblades. Similar to how Birth by Sleep had the different forms and different builds for every time you use a specific attack. And in this case, the Keyblades changed forms and they offered a lot for experimentation. I really really love that. I loved it so much. It just worked well. It allowed, and none of them that they also implemented a free keyblade system which was something that I don't think most people thought they wanted but when they got it they wanted it so badly because it builds it gives you a sense of creativity and experimentation in combat. So if you're like if you're somebody who likes using magic, somebody who likes being on the defensive, or somebody who is really aggressive in their in their attacks, then you can experiment with that, which I really love. Now, and also regarding the hardless and the nobodies, there was a lot more variety, I guess. I really did like the fact that there was more creativity towards the different hardless and the nobodies that came around. It, it was a sense that it kind of didn't really have in Kingdom Hearts 2. Moving past that, the overall structure of the game, such as the Disney worlds that come into this, they're really, really good. They're more massive than previous Kingdom Hearts games, so they give a sense of exploration. And the way how they're detailed, it's so, so, so good. It's like you're diving into the, the world of the film, and it feels exactly like how you would expect the film would look in the video game. Especially Frozen's world, Tangle's world, Big Hero 6's world. Like, those, those feel like they came straight out of the movie, but they just took the entire stuff that they created for the movie and just put it into the game without any fuss. And I really loved how they were able to replicate certain moments from the movies. And you can barely tell the difference between the cutscenes in the game and the movie itself. It's almost as if they took scenes from the movie itself <coughs> and put it into the game. And I love that. It was like a sense of detail I didn't think they would be able to replicate. Especially when you go back to the previous games and you kind of see how they were with the worlds in those games. 
But nevertheless, I really love how they handle the combat. I really love how they handle the world structure. And honestly, one of the things I kind of liked about this game more, even more so than the other games, is the gummy ship parts. Like, the gummy ship exploration is actually a lot more fun in this game than it was in any of the other games. It played out similar to, like, say, Star Fox. Like, the whole exploring the different planets, trying to get through obstacles and all that to get to your next destination. Although the combat in the gummy ships are very much similar to Kingdom Hearts 2. Like, it is very, it is very good how they handle the gummy ships. It's much more improved in my opinion. <clears throat> I know a lot of people don't really like the gummy ship moments, but I really do. They were really fun, for the most part. Though I will say with the gummy ship moments, the thing I kind of disliked about it, and it's something that I kind of also noticed about the game in general, is like, it really didn't need you to to modify your gummy ship in any sort of way. Like, you could have just stuck with the first gummy ship you have, and you would have no problem. Especially since <clears throat> most of the bosses, that, or like the enemies in the gummy ship segment, you can skip them completely. Which I, I'll admit, that is a kind of a bit disappointing. I kind of wish there were like certain gummy. Like, there was like more times when you had to do the gummy ship moments. But for the most part, it was very enjoyable. And as I said before, the different Disney worlds felt nice. I think my favorite Disney world so far has always got to be Pirates of the Caribbean. Mostly because that not only made it look like the actual movie itself, but you got the chance to explore the seven seas on ship and the combat, like the naval combat, felt very satisfying. And they managed to update Point Royal, like, they did a lot with that world. It felt like it was probably like the world that they put the most amount of time into designing. And I really, really like it. It just felt nice. It felt like I was a pirate. Like, I loved it. But that's probably my favorite world, and it's probably the one I spent the most amount of time in. Um, least favorite is probably gonna be the Frozen World. Only because I just have... Uh, I just get easily triggered by Frozen and anything related to that, especially when I hear that damn song. Which, by the way, if you're not a fan of, of, of the Frozen song, Let It Go, <sighs> they also replicate the entire segment for that, for that world. You just straight up listen to the entire song and how and the animated segment of Elsa just building the ice castle. And I'm just... Yeah, I was just like, oh god, not this shit. Yeah. So if you're not a fan of that, uh, you're gonna have a bad time in Frozen World. <laughs> I will say it is still fun, but it's definitely my least favorite. Um, in terms of... But if I had to say one thing about the different worlds, I feel like there were a lot of moments where, in some of the worlds where you don't, when you just kind of like have to, I guess, backtrack a bit. Which I kind of didn't really like so much in that game. Because it kind of took, especially in the Frozen world, like you kind of had to backtrack like several times. And well, I'm not, well, I'm not a really, a, I don't really care too much about backtracking in general. But, for this case, it wasn't as good. I don't know. Uh, I guess... And also, in terms of, um... Hmm, honestly, there isn't really much else I can really complain about when it comes to the overall gameplay. Except for the fact that I felt that the difficulty in this game is relatively easy. Like, you can play this game on proud difficulty, and you would still be able to kick ass. That's something that I kind of was a little bit disappointed by. Like, there were very few times where I died in this game. I believe that it was, um... I think I, I died at least 
before like I only like five deaths in this game. It was it was kind of sad. But I'm gonna attribute that to the fact that I played this series way too much times. So, I don't know. I can't really say much else. Well, I can also talk about the story for Kingdom Hearts 3. But to begin, um, I kind of had to explain the rest. So as most people know, Kingdom Hearts has always had a convoluted story with a lot of plot points and references that can only be understood if you have played all the games or at the very least watch all the cutscenes. Kingdom Hearts 3 makes no difference. It is basically a requirement for you to know the story of all the other games. But Kingdom Hearts 3 manages to be the less convoluted in terms of its story. Not only does it manage to explain the events of previous Kingdom Hearts games so that you don't feel as confused, <laughs> it also has a rather m simple plot that gets more and more interesting as you go for the game. <clears throat> I definitely liked it more than all the other games in comparison, but my only critique on the story itself was I feel some of the care I feel like some of the characters and how they ended up being rescued by sword it felt way too easy and it kind of felt like a lot of plot armor at that point which I guess is something we're all used to when it comes to watching media in general since we don't want to have these people that we care about die but it's very, very easy to see the plot armor that this game has towards its characters. And it makes me laugh, but, it, but at the same time, watching these different characters and they're seeing how their fates ended up, and it just brought a, like joy to my heart and it brought tears to my eyes. However, hmm. One of the things that kind of critiqued a bit is how the story also ends up in some of the Disney worlds. I really don't like how in Pirates of the Caribbean, the the world itself, you don't, you're not really involved at all with the story itself. So when you're going through that world, you just have very little involvement whatsoever in the game. In Frozen's world, in... And for in the Tangled world, there was, those ones were more like you were more involved, directly involved with it. <coughs> However, some of the other ones, since they followed their own little stories that takes place like after the movies, they definitely don't. They already have Sora's involvement, so it doesn't really matter as much. But yeah, some of the story elements just didn't really just didn't really work for most of the worlds and it kind of felt like they were just putting in a bunch of different characters in like different in different worlds and just being like okay we're gonna have them interact with Sora but that's it that, like that's the only thing you can ever really get any interaction with whatsoever I mean you don't see them for like a couple hours uh, which reminds me this game has a habit of having very good plot to it but eventually don't matter in the end because one of the plot twists involves Merluxia, Lurxene, um, Luxord, and Demix. And that same plot twist ends up becoming irrelevant. Because at the end of the game, you just they just never bring it up again. And then Maleficent and Pete as characters, they just have no involvement whatsoever with the main story. They feel more like... like they, feel, they feel like more like cameos in this game. In comparison to like all the other games where they like they were a major threat to Sora and Donald and Goofy, that kind of disappointed me. One of the other things that kind of disappointed me about this game was the fact that there is no Final Fantasy characters, like whatsoever. The only reference they do is at the beginning of Mount Olympus, but that's it. There is no no Final Fantasy characters. There is no reference to them whatsoever, which kind of disappoints me because they're in this game was known for being a crossover between Disney and and Final Fantasy characters. I'm not sure what happened there, but it is really it is disappointing what when you had these characters for like three or four games and then they just disappear and you have no idea what happened to them. 
And another thing that I kind of disliked about the game itself is the cutscenes. Now, granted, there are some moments where you can barely notice like some of the cutscenes, but you can. But there were also times where you can see what are the render cutscenes or like the cut in-game cutscenes that they had. And one of the things I hated about the cutscenes is I felt like the characters themselves in the cutscenes felt lifeless. Like besides them, just like you can clearly see what they're breathing and removing slightly. They're just standing there for like most of the cutscene with the occasional like moving their arms and all that. And it honestly annoyed me to no end because this game looks beautiful. This game looks amazing. And it kind of disappoints me when I'm just seeing Sora just like sitting there just like without really doing much with his body whatsoever. Like you could have gotten, they could have gotten away with it if it was like the old engine that they were using for the other Kingdom Hearts games or like the engine they were using for Final Fantasy. But in this one, it just, it just didn't feel right for me. Um, let's see, what else? Honestly, that's about as much as I would like to talk about when it comes to Kingdom Hearts 3 without revealing too much of the game. But I could just tell you all oh, this. Oh, this game is just so amazing. Despite a lot of the grievances I could have with this game, like ever smaller, pretty decently big, I really enjoyed this game a lot. It is giving me moments that I didn't think I was going to have and to this day I cannot believe that I've gotten a chance to play this game. I still believe in my mind that I'm in some alternate reality where this game released and the reality that I'm in it is never released and it just keeps getting delayed and delayed because of bullshit. And so for me finishing this game and seeing the ending, seeing the secret ending, the epilogue, it just leaves, it leaves a, a part of my heart that, that was holding on to it for so long, and then finally finishing this game, it just kind of let itself go, and it has that empty spot there. I don't think it's ever gonna get filled up. Not even if they announced another Kingdom Hearts game. And it's just like this game is so great. And for me personally, I can, I'll can i never be able to have an experience that this game has ever given me. So, my only, my overall review of this game is that if you, re if you really like playing games, if you really like the Kingdom Hearts games, if you're a fan of like games with like really fun game combat, or if you're into really convoluted stories, or if you're like this and you're just like, you, if you have something that, if you have something in interest, this game is good for you. This is like, I highly recommend it. You just gotta get past some of the grievances in the game, but I can not recommend this game enough for, to you all. And for me, I thank Tetsuo Nomura for his hard work in developing this game. And I simply wish that the next game that he creates, whether it's the Final Fantasy VII remake, whether it's another game, or if it's Kingdom Hearts 4 or any or any of that, I really am looking forward to it. And should they ever make a Kingdom Hearts 4, I will gladly play it in a heartbeat, because this game set a foundation that I feel they're gonna improve upon even more. Though I don't believe they can prove the combat any better. Because this combat is just so good. So yeah. Well, I'm going to end off the video here. Thanks so much for listening to my to my really random review. That has a bunch of moments of... Like, it just doesn't really... It's not really consistent. So I apologize for that. But I feel like I got my point across. The game, the game is really good. I won't say it's perfect, but it's amazing. The combat is fantastic, and the story, it's less convoluted than the other ones. But you do need to have played the other ones, or at least watch the cutscenes to understand what's going on. So with that, I'm going to end up the video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Ciao.